I loved books and loved reading and um, to lose books and, and uh, to lose the capacity to uh, read by yourself was probably about the most devastating uh, part of the condition. Aidan Flynn is a former GP who developed AMD in his 40s. Of all things, he missed reading most. I didn't mind giving up the car. I didn't mind not being able to play golf. I didn't mind that so much. What I did mind was not being able to, to read. Now, there are audiobooks, there are cassettes, uh, there are various scanners, but it's not the same as simply picking up a book. Aidan joined the Macular Disease Society and volunteered to be an eccentric viewing trainer. He was trained himself in the techniques and also taught to pass the skills on to others. Not everyone can use eccentric viewing and those who do will not be able to read as they did before they developed MD, but it does make a significant difference to many people. Right? Look at the where the hands meet in the middle. Look at the Look at the dark. Okay, we'll get a light here for you. I'll never be able to read the same way as a sighted person can read. I, I'll never be able to simply just browse and scan. But I still can pick up a book and read it myself. I can read my own mail, I can read the own letters. And that's very, very empowering. Um, it's, it helps your confidence, it helps your self-esteem. This is why we believe eccentric viewing training should be available to everyone with central vision loss. Eccentric viewing and steady eye are techniques which help a person use their residual vision more effectively, especially when macular disease affects both eyes. The skills develop with practice and make reading easier, increasing both reading speed and comprehension. Where the hands would come from, mm -hmm. that, I would think, disappears again. Yes. But that's actually taking your vision even further away from the centre, right. mm -hmm. which is you'll be able to cope with, I think, probably without your magnifier. All of the words are five-letter words. Mm -hmm. If you stumble on one, I'm not going to correct you because I just want to see how you, right. how you can read in a minute. So yeah. I'm going to time you. When you're ready, please start. You just want me to read straight across? Yes, indeed, yes. Yeah. Catch, tired, glazed, could, fresh, table, llama. Mm hmm. Yes. Stick. I would say it's extremely important for those who really want to be able to read. Mm. There are those I know who would find it, still find it quite difficult because the amount of sight they've been left with is not necessarily that good but for a good majority of the people I've worked with and um, I would say of the 60 odd people I've worked with there's only a, two people that I've really not had much success with and that's probably more to do with physical ailments mm. rather than a problem with the sight so I think for most people with the macular it's, it's a fantastic technique to use. Eccentric viewing uses the peripheral retina to look at objects it requires the identification of a person's best functional area of vision closest to the fovea. I'm sorry, you have to look at my face. It's one of those things. <laughs> Concentrate on my nose, and I guess that pretty much disappears, does it, it my does nose? It does, actually. I just meant to say that. That's right. <laughs> what nose, yes. But once you're concentrating on my nose, is yeah. there any part of my face that seems much clearer than the rest. Yes, your right eye. My right eye seems much mm -hmm. clearer. Right eye, sorry. Okay. There are various methods to help an individual identify the location of healthy cells and the direction of gaze necessary to use it. These initial stages include the mapping of the shape of the scotoma or scotomas. One way is to use charts, including Amsler grids and one to nine charts to help a person decide which areas are clearest rather than ask them to define what's missing. Many people with MD already use eccentric viewing to some extent. They may, for example, turn their head to one side to see a friend's face better, or to watch television. However, the position they've self-identified isn't always the optimum one for near tasks like reading. If they found a position to the right, for example, it will interfere with reading, because as we read from left to right, 
the text will need to go through the damaged area before it's read and understood, slowing down comprehension. The optimum position for eccentric fixation for reading is actually immediately above or below the centre. But depending on the location of the scotoma, this may not always be possible. Don't make a sound. The bottom yeah. paragraph, mm -hmm. I want you to read that for me. Did that go on? Did Do the same thing Do again. Do the same thing again. Down here. It is always right that... Once the best area of vision is identified, a person needs to learn the steady eye technique. That is, they need to keep their head and eyes still when reading. Instead of moving their eyes across the page as they read, the page itself is moved from right to left. This skill takes practice to perfect, as people need to break the learned reflex saccadic movement of the eyes when reading. The saccadic eye movement which is developed during childhood breaks down as the macula loses function, but the brain still tries to maintain its use. This is probably the hardest skill to master and takes the most practice. Eccentric fixation often becomes automatic with time, but the steady eye part still needs conscious thought, yet it is this which makes the most impact on fluency, and for most people it is really worth the effort. And look at my fingers. No, I would like you to concentrate on my hands. Hand. You're looking down at the area I'm suggesting, aren't yes. you? Yes. Because you're reading. Yes. Have you noticed you're reading quicker? Am I? Yes, you are. Oh, good. Yes, if you're you... doing what you suggested. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. yes I guess you were. Nearest the to light, you. the light. This area around here. The Macular Disease Society has now trained hundreds of people in eccentric viewing. In independent evaluation, our trainees reported improved fluency, accuracy and reading speeds. Many managed smaller print. They reported a reduced negative impact of MD and an improved quality of life. Other benefits included greater mobility, easier recognition of faces, greater enjoyment from watching television. It was easier to tell the time. Many had renewed interest in hobbies and increased confidence and independence. EV is a mainstream part of rehabilitation in some countries, notably Scandinavia and Australia. Only a few organisations currently offer it in the UK, among them Visibility in Glasgow. Many people will tell us when, when they come to Visibility, they've been through the, the diagnosis and they've been through the medical side of things. And with the best will in the world, um, the professionals who, 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 who they've seen up until that point in time have, have done the very best that they can for them. But if, if nothing can be done, uh, then people can be left with you know, a fairly negative um, outlook, outlook on life. And it's quite good to be able to do something that's positive. Look, this is something that we can try. It might not work, but it's something that we can do. And it's also something that you've got a bit of control in because you have to, I can help you to, to learn the techniques, but you have to go away and actually do the work and, and practice in between times. So it's actually giving a bit of control back to the person and allowing them to do something, that, you know, again, very positive. So what I want you to do is, is to concentrate when you get to the middle of the line on keeping your head steady. So your head shouldn't be moving at all. It's the page that should be moving. The Macular Disease Society and other supporters of EV believe it should be seen as a useful tool in the rehabilitation box. It is most effective when combined with good use of lighting and the correct use of magnification. Some rehabilitation teams do offer it already and David Logan believes there are good reasons for more to do so. I think one of the, the important things about eccentric viewing training and one of the reasons that people should embrace it and begin to actually use it in their practice is that it's very cheap and cheerful. You don't need a lot of expensive equipment to do it. What you do need is motivation. You need to be motivated as a trainer or as a professional and the person you're working with you know, best needs to be motivated as well. It's important that, that people are motivated to, to become involved here. The, time, the actual time, I would argue, uh, although it can take maybe four or five sessions, you know, maybe four or five hours to get someone uh, reasonably competent in eccentric viewing and eccentric reading, I would argue that's time very well spent because that's, that's less time that those, those people have to become involved with the other support services because they can do more things for themselves. Their independence is, is improved because of that. Their confidence level soars because of that sometimes. In fact, when, when we evaluate you know, the work that we've done with each individual person, at the end of the training programme, without exception, I would say that people say that it's increased their confidence. And I think that, that's very, very important because people's confidence very often is down you know, because they've, they've been through some hard times.
this makes your life independent. You don't have to wait on your family coming up till you read everything for you. You can read your own letters, you can read instructions, you can read guarantees. If you want to have an argument about your electricity bill or something like that, you've got the reference and you can go to town on them. It makes you independent. You're leading a normal life. And nobody knows your business but you. I think it's great. I wouldn't be without it. There is growing evidence of the value of eccentric viewing. Gordon Dutton is a professor of ophthalmology in Glasgow. He's interested in the way the brain changes to adapt to eccentric fixation and has evaluated much of Visibility's work on EV. We've carried out an audit uh, of uh, the people who have had this training uh, and practically over 90% um, are aware that it's made a very significant difference to them. Not only are they able to uh, read with greater facility, some are able to read much faster, others can read smaller print, uh, and then they are also able to access information uh, in supermarkets uh, and uh, on labels. We use vision for three things. We use vision for access to information, that is enhanced. We use vision for mobility, uh, and um, some of our patients have explained that um, they do feel that they've got greater mobility because they're now no longer looking uh, at the pavement edge which then disappears and then they fall off it. They're looking to the side and they see the pavement. And we use vision uh, for social communication and even that can be enhanced because instead of the person not being able to see facial expressions when communicating, by the simple act of uh, looking to the side of the face onto their uh, chosen eccentric viewing location for that, that can be enhanced too. So overall, um, people's lives can be enhanced uh, not only just by reading, uh, but um, in all aspects. The Macular Disease Society is mapping existing provision in the UK, so please tell us if you are offering eccentric viewing. We're developing new partnerships with other organisations and practitioners to expand the availability of eccentric viewing. The Macular Disease Society believes that everyone with central vision loss should be offered training in eccentric viewing and steady eye techniques as part of an holistic low vision and rehabilitation package. Please contact us to find out more. Thank you.